I'm absolutely thrilled to talk today about the Virtual Institute 4IO or VI4IO in short. My name is Julian Kunkel. So what is VI4IO? VI4IO has a set of goals. First of all, it aims to provide a platform for IO enthusiasts for exchanging information. Secondly, it tries to foster training and collaboration in the field of high performance IO. And lastly, it aims to track and encourage the deployment of large storage systems. In that sense, it actually helped the IO500 to become bootstrapped, but it has also an exciting activity, which is the data center list that is connected to the IO500. And I will talk in this talk more about this issue and how this is relevant. So regarding the platform, you will find in, when you follow to this link that it is mainly organized as a web page, which is in fact a wiki. Also, it has some mailing lists that you can register to get information. So let's talk about a comprehensive data center list or CDCL in short. What is it? Well, it aims to capture system characteristics for sites, so for data centers, and all the supercomputers and storage systems. It has a very comprehensive system model, that's why it's called the Comprehensive Data Center List, which is ex also extendable and it tries to support all logical components and subcomponents relevant in a data center and relevant for supercomputers, storage, and sites. This also includes measured, measured performance characteristics but also theoretic characteristics. Yeah, and it spans the range from compute node, storage node, over local storage, um, over memory costs and energy consumption. And or actually the building structure. So at the moment there are 57 sites and note that a site can have multiple data, uh, well, a site is one data center that can have multiple storage systems inside or supercomputers. So here we see a list of only the one characteristic which is the net capacity in this column and another characteristic with the compute peak in this column over here. Once we have this data we can easily and automatically derive graphs. Here you see for example the capacity grouped by vendors. So at the moment IBM as far as this list is concerned, dominates this list. Also the USA dominates this list. Why am I saying this? Because I hope that other countries will input more data. That way this data source will grow and also you will take your rightful place here in the list in terms of capacity, of course. Same for the vendors. Okay, so that was a little bit of advertisement and teasing. Thanks for listening to me. So what features does the CDCL have? Well, it has a web page integration. So you can use the CDCL also to create a HTML representation that you can embed into your web page. And in fact, we are working toward a standardized presentation of systems on different data center sites. So you may know that every data center has its own way of presenting the local system and we try to standardize this presentation. Of course it would be useful when one user goes from one data center to another that they find a similar representation of it. So you, this HTML representation you can host on your site directly but you can also of course import and export it into the VI4IO data center list. There's an editor in this link over here. Yeah, and uh, you can when, when you want to add a new site to vi 4 you can use an, a PHP page which allows you to create wiki steps and then you will have a simple way of adding a standardized representation onto the web page. But of course you can contact anyone from vi 4 to get some help. So here you get, see a screenshot of the editor which is just an example. So the user is able to add certain sections which are kind of like templates or schemas. So you can add, for example, by clicking on Supercomputer Plus a new supercomputer. Once you have added a supercomputer, you can click here this bigger sign to expand the page. Like here you see an expanded page for storage system. And then 
as it is nested, you can add sub schemas like I know more about uh, my storage system because it consists of luster nodes. It may consist, I may know more about the energy consumption or costs of the system, so I will, can add this kind of data. So the schema is very flexible and we update it as it needed and it has this kind of recursive component model that also allows you to link components add onto another area upon demand. So users can add optional components such as energy and cost that I mentioned and in terms of information for um, the systems that you add, there are on certain levels buttons such as like here, recalc, which allows you to automatically summarize certain attributes. For example, if I have a stored system luster that has three different types of nodes, I can just push the button recalc to get the total number of servers by aggregating the individual node counts of these three different sections. So you may also draw certain relations between the components. I, I didn't show the drawing feature here, but it's available on the web page. Now let me talk a little bit about the roadmap for 2021 and the relationship to I.O. 500. So what has been achieved in 2021 was that first, for the first time we have now a storage system specific schemas for I.O. 500. So when you try to submit to I.O. 500, you may have seen that you used this kind of representation here, slightly adjusted of course, um, for I.O. 500. The purpose is that you can now use a language common to the storage file system. For example, the Luster schema is, looks different than the Spectrum Scale schema, looks different than the BGFS schema and so on. The purpose is that the user and administrator that have run I.O. 500 benchmark should be able to run it, to enter the information as they are accustomed to it. Yeah, when you talk about Luster, you talk about OSTs and MDTs and certain configuration flags that are relevant. When you talk about spectrum scale, you have different knobs and system components that you want to talk about. And then there are certain rules and automatically um, and this kind of aggregation to compute comparable quantities that are then used at IO500 to actually um, create derived lists and compute arbitrary equations. For example, you could compute um, the storage capacity divided by the IO500 score, for instance. So, um, yeah, so the first version had been rolled out for the IO500, but it's still not completed because this is a huge effort to get the schema correct. So we need vendor help particularly, but also your help is appreciated if you have suggestions how to improve it, because we want to have the most appropriate schema that can be easily understood by users. Also, we need to provide better documentation and the I4IO will support IO500 to yield this kind of output. We have also created the first tools that automatically populate the schemas. So that means when you run on a supercomputer that has, for example, Slurm, you can run the CDCL Slurm tool to inject the certain configuration information that you have, or like the number of nodes of different types, into the schema automatically. So the IO500 um, schema shall be integrated into the CDCL at some point. And the purpose is that when users create the schema for IO500, they can also create a CDCL schema. And again, imagine how cool it is with IO500 when you can say, for example, the score of, of your system divided by the energy consumption or divided by for example, the storage capacity, costs and what have you. There are many possible evaluations that one can do once the data would be there. That's why we aim to have this common description and that's why we aim to integrate with IO500 deeply. Good. Another activity is the genre of high performance storage, um, which is, is, has an ISN, ASSN number. It has certain features that makes it distinguished toward other journals that exist in the field. For example, it has open reviews. That means anyone can provide feedback. This feedback is also being publicly released after a paper is accepted. 
So that means reviewers are really encouraged to provide constructive feedback and fair feedback and everyone will know who has given feedback to a certain article. It has living papers, that means articles that have been published can improve over time, you can make minor extensions to it and it will just become a new version. And also users can comment on it again because the open, open review feature will still remain available after the initial version has been published. It's, it aims to have digital replicability of your analysis at least and experiments if possible. That means people are encouraged to submit a description how they run the workflows, allowing reviewers to reproduce their workflows for analysis at least and experiments if possible. It is free and is open access and you find the link over here. So it has been tested successfully on the HPC IODC workshop last year and this year. We have a LaTeX and Google Doc workflows. The first issue has been published beginning of the year and at the moment there are two papers in the incubator that will be published soon. So this incubator is basically the idea that you all the papers go there before they will be accepted and that's where the open reviews basically take place. Other activities from the Virtual Institute for I.O. are that we generally support I.O. benchmarking. So we worked this year with the I.O. 500 uh, community to evolve the I.O. benchmarks HPC further. So particularly IOR MD test. But we also added some other benchmarks like MD Workbench, which is a latency oriented benchmark compared to the throughput oriented benchmark of MD test. Also work on the documentation, testing using IO500. We just deployed performance regression using Jenkins now for the HPC IOR repository and generally are happy to support users to run and discuss IO benchmarks. Lastly, an activity that we spun off a couple of years ago was the next generation IO interfaces. The goal was really to create a community forum to discuss next generation APIs of IO. We just revitalized this effort this year and we had a, a birth of a feather session at the um, ISC HPC and we hope we make some good progress for the next generation of IO interfaces for the good of the whole community. So VI4IO is open for everyone and very welcoming. Join our Slack for instance um, to, to get in touch with the community and uh, I'm personally happy to support anyone for IO and uh, wish you a great day. Thank you very much.